The following content is provided under a Creative Commons license. Your support will help MIT OpenCourseWare continue to offer high-quality educational resources for free. To make a donation or view additional materials from hundreds of MIT courses, visit MIT OpenCourseWare at ocw.mit.edu. All right, so today is all about you. Uh, we are introducing Project 2. Uh, we are starting off with the Project 1 pitch presentations. Then we're going to have prototype demonstrations. The idea is that everyone in class should have heard about all the games that were made and should have at least seen all of the games be played. Um, it's going to be kind of difficult, but we're going to try to do that. After that, we're going to form teams. So we're going to choose a few of these games and form teams around them. And then after that, assuming we have time left, we're going to work on our new teams. Um, you're going to rewrite that Project 1 vision statement, and you're going to modify the paper prototype um, while you're here as a group just to kind of see what the mechanics were and what you're going to have to do for Project 2. So starting off, Project 2, it's another low fidelity prototyping, but this is more digital. So you're going to actually make a digital game. Um, we're asking to create this digital prototype in a short time frame. Um, you had about a week to do Project 1. You're going to have about two weeks to do Project 2. Um, there will be some of the work done in class. Unfortunately, it's not going to be the programming. That's going to have to happen outside of class. In class, we're doing a lot of the meetings and a lot of the project management stuff in class. And we'll be walking you through a lot of that. Um, you're going to be basing that game off of a Project 1 team uh, game. And then, yeah, you're going to integrate project management concepts into your process. And we'll be talking about some of that stuff starting Wednesday. Extra goals. Um, you're going to be working as a team for the first time using a common game engine. So, Hopefully some of the lessons from that um, game engine tutorial um, we did last week uh, work out. I think that was last week. Yeah, uh, work out for you. Um, you're going to be doing version control. So it looked like we had everybody able to use some kind of version control with all of those engines. That's a good sign. And then you're also going to be managing your time commitments. Um, this is the first time you're going to have six people on one project for this class. And then you're going to continue like that for the rest of the semester. So coming up with strategies on how to work with each other, how to do in how to, to maximize the work you do in person and what you can do when you're not next to each other, when you're working from your dorm room or from a study area, things like that. So the deliverables for this one, um, today we are going to do this workshop, this team formation workshop. On Wednesday, we're going to be workshopping the product backlog um, and you're going to be turning into Stellar. Actually, I meant the vision statement, but on Wednesday, by the end of class, we'd like you to turn into Stellar an updated vision statement, either so take the vision, the statement you, you are working on for project one, modify it based on the new team you have. You'll do a little bit of that today in class, and then you'll turn it in by the end of class on Wednesday to Stellar. Um, the following week, you're going to turn into Stellar before class starts a product backlog based on the workshop you did the week prior. And in class, we're going to talk about sprint back task lists. And you're going to, so you don't know what a sprint task list is right now. You don't know what estimates are right now. You'll be working on that in Monday. And then you'll be giving a sh each team will give a short presentation to us about the, work, about the work that you did. On Wednesday, you'll turn in that task list you created. And in class on Wednesday, we'll be playing all of the digital games. So you have to have something running by Wednesday at 1 PM. Um, it could be running and broken. You might not get much good feedback out, out of it, but it must be running by Wednesday at 1 PM. And then the following Monday, the project is due. Um, yeah, really, really short. Um, on Stellar, you're going to turn in a whole bunch of stuff. Um, all of your games should compile out to HTML, um, either be playable on a website or use a website plugin like Unity or Flash or whatnot. Um, so there's more details in the handout in Stellar. I updated that this morning, so please take a look at that. Um, when you're, once your teams are formed, that's probably one of the first things you should do is take a look at those requirements. Um, again, you'll need a, writ a written postmortem from each of you. Um, we'll ask for a design change log, which your first entry will be today. Um, you'll need an updated vision statement if, you, if anything changed from the one you turned in on whatever I said it was, Wednesday. Um, if anything's changed, you'll turn it in again. And you'll be doing focus tests reports. Um, so we'll be doing some, some focus testing, some testing um, in the next week. Um, and then, yeah, you also do a postmortem presentation. And so this presentation will actually be five minutes per, per team. Um, the requirements are on the, um, the work half, the handout, and we'll talk about it a little more later in, this, in the next week or so. But basically, it's tell us what went right, tell us what went wrong, tell us what you learned. Um, we don't necessarily want to see the game being played. We want to see what you learned from the game. So highlight that with screenshots, with video, stuff like that. 
All right, so this is what we're doing for the next, we've got 15 slots, so for the next 15 or so minutes, elevator pitches. Why are we asking you to do an elevator pitch? If you can succinctly describe your game in one minute, it's probably pretty well scoped for project two. Also, you probably have a handle on what you're actually making. You know what, what the game's about. You can describe the game to another person. To us, that means, great, that project is pro probably gonna be a project two project. Um, if you have a little bit of difficulty describing it, if you go a little bit over time, we're gonna allow you to go over time, but don't. Um, why did I even tell you that? I just messed everything up, didn't I? Um, but if there's some issues going on with that, that'll let us know a little bit about the scope of the project. Um, don't show us the game. Don't use visuals. Don't use laptops. You're in an, an elevator with an executive. They said, fine, you got a minute of my time. Tell me what you're trying to do. Bam. Convince them that your game is cool. Convince them what your game does. In this particular case, we want to know why it's about planning for randomness. Remember, that's our design constraint for these next, for the project one and project two. What about your game is planning for randomness? What, ha what is the core piece of gameplay in it? Remember in your vision statement, we asked you for, in one of the versions, we asked you for 20 to 30 seconds of gameplay. That's a great thing to put in a pitch. So you got all the material, just take your minute, go. Um, afterwards, we're gonna do demonstrations, and I'll bring that slide up later. Uh, but basically, we're not gonna just rely on you talking about your game. We're gonna be able to see all the games being played, and we're gonna, try, again, try to get everybody able to see all the games being played if they haven't been played already. And after that, we're gonna try to form teams, which is really hard. So that comes later. All right, any questions before we move on? Any additional comments from y'all? Oh yeah, remember to check handout two on Stellar. So yes, yeah, by the end of class today. All right, so first team is Lazy Beaver. Um, again, you only, need, you only need one person from the team to come up if you don't all wanna come up. Come up here, stand about right here. There's a microphone right here, it'll capture you. Talk. Lazy Beaver, come on down. All right, hi everyone. Um, our game is called Lazy Beaver. Uh, Lazy Beaver is a survival game in which players must take on a chaotic world full of surprises. These surprises come in the form of random environmental events, such as hurricanes, predators, and even Ebola. The player takes one action every day, which either replenishes or depletes their finite resources, with the objective of surviving the elements in order to build a set number of dams. Since the environment is so unpredictable, the player must carefully plan their actions or risk losing by running out of any of their resources. This lets the player either choose to be risky or play it safe. The digital prototype will maintain the same core gameplay of choosing actions, reacting to the environment, and preparing for disasters. We will take the opportunity to carefully balance events and resources to tune the difficulty and appeal to all types of players. Lazy Beaver should move on to Project 2 because during testing, players found their game both delightful and difficult. Also, the technical scope of the game is fitting for Project 2's timeline and the mechanics of the game are well suited for the preparing for randomness theme. Dragon's Lair, come on down. Hello everybody, our game is called Dragon's Lair. Uh, the game's point is you are an adventurer and you come into a Dragon's Lair. You have 20 actions you can take, but after every time you take an action, the dragon destroys one of them. The point is you want to try to collect as much gold as possible. The game ends when all the cards are either discarded by you or destroyed by the dragon, and then you count up how much gold you got at the end. The game is lost, though, if you run out the dragon's patience because the dragon can only put up with you being in its lair for so long. The game would be good for Project 2 because it has a small scope. The only thing we want to do for the digital prototype is get some artwork in there, get a little bit of ambient music, add a timer so that people aren't taking too long in each turn, and add a high score table because the game has a high replayability value, so we want people to be able to see their achievements. Um, people found it fun, and it was difficult, and so yeah, we think it's a good game. Thank you. Try to play. Come on down. You're the next contestant. And please, no talking while they're doing this. 
Why is it that in every Indiana Jones movie ever, there's a temple that gets destroyed? A temple gets destroyed because it turns out that running out of a temple is really, really fun. Our game, Fight or Flight, forces the players to run from a randomly mob, a environment that gets randomly destroyed behind or in front of them, and balance their actions between fighting their pursuers and just running as quickly as possible. It works for Project 2 because it's fun, dynamic, and actually pretty simple at its core. Thank you. Plunder wins. Hi everyone, um, our game is Plunder Wins, a pirate themed treasure hunting game. Our game is based around three simple core mechanics that interact with each other. The first one is a random encounter mechanic which controls the probability of finding treasure. And you can, uh, you can affect this as the game progresses. An exploration mechanic which tells you what the risk level of nearby encounters will be. And the wind mechanic which limits your movement and forces the player to make strategic decisions about where they move. Our game's digital, uh, digital prototype would have the same core mechanics as our paper prototype, but it would be faster and have more graphics, so it would be easier for players to pick up. We could also add um, um, unique encounters and abilities to improve replayability. Um, so our project should move on to project two, two since it's easy to implement. And also, through our playtesting, we found that players found it easy to pick up, but also uh, found it hard to master. So you should come join our crew. Thunder wins. <laughs> Thank you. Blind Aliens. WT. It's a working title. Uh -huh. Hi, everyone. We're Blind Aliens. <laughs> our game is Blind Aliens. Um, the premise of the game is aliens, blind aliens have invaded the earth and you are one of very few surviving humans. And the game is very simple. It's in a very small room. There's aliens that come in through random gates around the edges and they randomly roam around searching for you, but they can't see you because they're blind. So you have three <laughs> options. You can sneak away very slowly or you can run very fast, which is loud. Or you have a gun, you can shoot at them, which is also very loud, and you'll be risking uh, getting discovered and eaten alive. So um, the game should move on to Project 2 because it's very simple. Um, the, during testing, we found that people found it very engaging and that it was not boring at all. Um, so yeah, thanks. Thank you. And next up is Live On. Hi everyone, Live On is a survival themed game that takes place on a hex grid based world. The player needs to stay alive and move from the start to the goal. There are four types of possible terrain grades, river, mountain, plain, and forest, each with simple cost and benefits. The key mechanic of the game is that at every turn, the player needs to choose which how to move on to next based on what information he has available. So the player only has limited vision, on one hand it's important to choose grids that would lead to a good location for the immediate next move. On the other hand, the player needs to plan for the unknown tiles that he can't see at the moment. The game will be a good project for Project 2 because, in my opinion, not only does making plans and incomplete information and random events, lies at the heart of the game's mechanic, we implement a good set of trade-offs and balances between the different terrains that serve to offer the player meaningful, consequential choices along his path to goal. In the digital version, in addition to the core gameplay, we seek to add randomized map generation and multiple characters with different abilities to further enhance the gameplay. We'll stay with a 2D game, the grid representation of the world, and turn-based and turn actions as opposed to continuous world or real-time gameplay. Thank you. Thank you. Fever Evolution. <laughs> All right, so Beaver Evolution is exactly what it sounds like. You have a colony of beavers, and you have to fight against nature and evolve your beavers over generations to survive against the trials and tribulations that nature will throw at you. The core mechanic of the game is based around making a choice between three different options for every, every generation. You can either build your dam, 
populate your beavers, or choose an evolution trait to help develop your colony to, to fight against the, um, the natural disasters that will try to hinder your progress. Our game is going to be a great game for Project 2, project two because we have a lot of ideas for implementing it in a real-time world. Um, currently, it is a turn-based uh, game where you make a choice and then you respond to a natural disaster. We think that it will be great for it to implement a real-time uh, a real time game because it, you will be able to respond to natural disasters and allocate your beavers to either work on your dam or work on evolving and have to have quick reflexes in order to survive through the game and uh, win the game. Thanks. Tom Hello. Comcastic is a cable monopoly, monopoly simulator where you're trying to place your oddly shaped service centers into an existing city landscape. Your goal is to make as much money as possible while caring about your customer satisfaction. <laughs> so in the digital prototype, we're basically going to have a grid where all the homes and businesses are laid out. And the user will see the inconvenient shaped pieces for your service uh, centers. And then when they select a center, they will see how many people can serve and the price that will cost them each month and then they will need to place these on the board. Uh, we think this is a good project for uh, Project 2 because we found that playing the game, creating the game is both very simple, and we found that it was really engaging. Um, we had a few random testers kind of describe it as a strategic version of uh, Tetris, basically. Thank you. Sparkly Redemption! You're a lady with only one arm, and your other arm is a gun that shoots things. You're disgracing your nation, and your only chance at redemption is to get all of the sparklies. However, the place where all the sparklies are are filled with monsters, and depending on which sparklies you pick up, sometimes you get better arm gun powers, but sometimes the monsters change their behavior, and you have to adapt to that, or just be strategic about picking up your sparklies. Um, our game is super cool, because even with our simple paper prototype version, people had a lot of fun with it. And it's a sort of game that's pretty easy to implement at a most basic, just fun to play stage, but then it's good to add stuff on top of it, like extra monster behaviors and super shooty arm powers. Also, you're a lady with one arm and a gun that shoots things, which I think is cool. <laughs> Mighty Dice. Hey everyone, so uh, Modi Dice is a math puzzle game like Sudoku or 2048 where the user navigates a dice around a, gri a square grid, um, rolling the dice one side at a time and adding the side of that dice to the square. The cool mechanic of this game is that each square is um, modulo 7 and the goal of the game is to reset all of the squares to zero. Um, this game will work well for Project 2 because it is a fast paced uh, mover game, kind of like 2048, and you can move the dice around very quickly while also having to plan out your moves. Thank you. Thank you. City evacuation! Um, in city evacuation, your goal is to escape the city because there's an earthquake in your city. And you have to do that while saving three friends along the way. And what will happen during the game is you might get hit you know, by an explosion, or a bridge might fall down, or you, know, you might have like some physical <coughs> impediment. As far as the digital scope, we're going to build a 2D game that's um, dependent on your dice roll and will generate random disaster cards that will come up and the hardest part will be the graphics. We think this is a good project for number two because there's a lot of randomness, but we also give the player a lot of tools to plan and strategize around that. Uh, additionally, people thought it was really fun to play, and though it's sort of simple to implement at the beginning, uh, we think there's ample challenge in like the graphics, the sounds, uh, the animations that can be built on top of that for any team. Thank you. Shoutkey.com slash doorway. All right. For the next 12 hours, our game is called shoutkey.com slash doorway. Here's the idea. You're playing World of Warcraft, sorry, uh, Warcraft 3, and you see that guy with like second and a half ping, and you get really jealous. You're like, man, I wish my ping were that high. So you like, start encouraging your pet to chew on your ethernet cables, get those dropped packets. You really want that slow, unresponsive feel. So we take that desire and mix it with a platformer 
to make a really frustrating game where as you play it, your controls become increasingly unresponsive. And, you know, I think it's hilarious. Fun, yeah, it's fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> slash doorway. Thank you. <laughs> Lost Underground. All right, so Lost Underground, you are a traveler, and you fall down a hole, and you get lost in an underground mine. So the goal of the game is equipped with some bombs, infinite amount of bombs, um, because that's just how games work. You're supposed to escape from the underground by um, planting bombs and, <clears throat> and, break and trying to move through barriers that you can clear. Uh, the randomness comes in with the addition of some ghost bombs that will be floating around and they will not chase you, but they would go through you uh, and would explode at random moments. So you have to plan around getting to the end of the level and also not dying before you get there, which is common in a game. Um, this is a good project because it's simple and it's sort of reminiscent of Bomberman, which is a great game, so yeah. Thanks, Dice Traders is a multiplayer card game where you play card combos in order to score points. Um, importantly, you can trade your cards with other players in order to improve your combos, but if you do that, you might be giving your opponents what they need to win. And so this uh, introduces a lot of strategic considerations about things like what your opponent's score is, uh, how large their hand is, and so on and so forth, and you have to keep all of that in mind when you're playing. And our playtesters really enjoyed the like, uh, complex strategy that arose from these simple elements. Um, it, is, it would be good for Project 2 because the mechanics are very simple, which would make the game easy to implement. However, it is designed as a multiplayer game, so it re would require some sort of AI. Right. Thank you. <laughs> and last but not least, Gravity Shift. That is the last one, right? Nobody else? Okay. All right, so our idea was for a puzzle platform with the following characteristics. It's a basic platform. You have a guy on one side trying to get to the other with a bunch of platforms. Unfortunately for you, the platforms are all spaced so that it's completely impossible to reach them. Fortunately for you, you can place a number of blocks anywhere you want on the stage. Unfortunately, again, they all cost points, and you'll lose points if you place them. And every time you land on a space, it'll disappear. Twist is, once you get to the end of a stage, everything will rotate 90 degrees. All your platforms will become walls and vice versa, and you have to make it again. If you weren't thinking ahead, then the second part of the stage will not be possible, which is why it requires the actual thinking ahead to solve the challenges. Uh, the reason that this would be a good idea for Project 2 is because it's a pretty basic idea, but it's actually a deceptively difficult game, and it's really easy to make a stage that's really hard to solve. OK, that was really good. You all kept to under a minute. Next up. We're going to take five minutes, set up your games, um, try to put a lot of space around where you're set up. I know it's going to be hard, um, but put enough space around where you're set up so we can, some people can watch what you're doing. Take one of these post-its, and how the hell do these work? There we go. Oh, yeah. Take one of these post-its, put your name on it, wicked big, plant it down on your table so we know what we're looking at. So set up your games. All the stuff that you might need is up here in these two boxes. Okay. Oh, I actually ran in the car. Well, no, no, you guys go. I'm going to place my phone. The goal is to make the whole board into zero module seven. And so you roll the dice, so for example, this is first now. All right. Okay. So, so uh, it's uh, it's about time. So uh, thanks everyone. And uh, first of all, all of you had playable prototypes. So for project one, go you. You you totally did it. Okay. Um, 
a couple of things that, 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 that we want to say about all of the projects. Actually, we expected that a lot more projects were going to be like vastly out of scope than we actually got. Uh, a lot of stuff that we saw here uh, could actually just be fine for uh, Project 3. Um, the, uh, a lot of, of, of the games that, that, that we saw here, once you're a little bit more comfortable with the technology and the build process, and with some, you know, in some cases, uh, it, it's going to be just the efficiencies of knowing the people on your team a little bit better, uh, you'll be able to execute any of these games uh, for something like Project 3. Uh, but we would like to actually guide this next step where we move from project one to project two a little bit better. So we are going to cut a couple of projects just to make the team building process go a little bit faster. Otherwise, having to select uh, which one of the 15 projects that we're going to carry on is just going to take way too long that, uh, than we have class, uh, class session. But we didn't do it completely arbitrarily. We're going to talk about our concerns. So if, you really, really, if, we're, if you're one of those games that we're going to cut, and you really, really want to do that for Project 3, I want you to use the time over Project 2 to think over your design and see how you will address all of these concerns while you're working on somebody else's Project 2. Okay? Uh, because we saw a lot of really, really good stuff here today. Um, let's see. So a couple of our games that we're cutting. Uh, Gravity Shift, we're going to cut that. Uh, because the randomness uh, isn't really integrated into the design at this point of time, uh, Again, think about it, figure out how, how you would do that for, for Project 3. Um, I actually had a, 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 a concern about the UI of that game because a lot of these games, that are, sure, some of you are working in Unity 3D, that seemed to be a game that would only, that UI-wise seems to suggest that it should be a 3D game because you need to know what the sides of the dice are before you roll things. But uh, how do you convey that to a player in a way that's not going to have them to deal with the camera? Um, and you could also do it in 2D, uh, but then how do you convey that information to the player? On yes. Oh. Oh, so, sorry. That was the feedback I had for module dice. Uh, my my mistake for gravity shift. Sorry, uh, my that, I I did in fact get that mixed up. For gravity shift, the UI problem was uh, how do you convey to the player uh, which way things are going to shift next? Right? Is it uh, relative to the player or is it relative to the level? When the gravity shifts, are you rotating the entire level or are you rotating the players? You know, and then now, now, now the player is falling sideways on the screen, right? These are all like big UI challenges. Assignment 3 actually happens to be about UI, so it's actually a good time to be able to tackle that. So, so think about that. Sorry, so, uh, sorry to module dice. But, but for Project was, 3, though, for that yeah. one, still bringing in the randomness and actually bringing in the design constraint for Project 3 will be um, important for that one. Yeah. Uh, OK. Then um, for fight or, uh, fight or Flight and Dice Traders, we have very similar feedback. Right now, your design is specifically, uh, the, the fun of your games are really in the multiplayer right, 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 right now. Uh, that is absolutely fine. In fact, you have really, really solid game designs. Uh, the, challenge, the, the problem is that Project 2 is really short, and AI is time consuming. It's not necessarily hard. It's just going to take a lot of time to, to, to to work on. So we're going to say, let's not do that on project two. You might, be, you might want to save that for our project three. Um, finally, uh, for two more games, uh, for City Evacuation and Doorway, um, actually, technically, both games are feasible. Uh, the, the, you, I, I'm actually f fairly confident that the games that you showed today could be done uh, in the time span of project two. However, I feel that a lot of the fun in those games comes in multiple levels. Being able to get different environments and different scenarios, uh, and that's going to be very time consuming, in which you don't, you don't have time for in Project 2. Um, so, uh, so, you know, in City Evaluation, it's kind of like the size of your level and all of the elements that you've got in it. Uh, uh, it's just going to take a lot of man, uh, a lot of man hours just to be able to generate one map, yet alone, uh, uh, let alone multiple maps. Our doorway, um, it seems to me that playing through one round of the game on a computer could go through pretty quickly. Uh, actually, what's doorway? I like to make eye contact. Uh, yeah, there, okay. Like, it seems to me like playing through a level, uh, at least the first couple of levels could go through pretty quick, uh, quick, quickly, quick which is fine. Players like that, uh, because you know, especially when they're ramping up right at the beginning of the game. But that means you've got to start that means you've got to generate a lot of levels. And that's just a lot of time that, uh, that, that, that you don't have. So 
for the rest of the projects, uh, we're going to put them up around, and, uh, and we are going to ask you to put your names using the little post-its uh, to show which team that you're signing on. But I still have more feedback, because the other g games have challenges that you're going to have to overcome too. Dragon's Lair, uh, there. So much information, so much information for players to have to understand what's going on. How are you going to convey that over to a player? Um, the, the, the good news is your information is relatively static. It's not like you have numbers changing in the middle. Plunderwids, you do have numbers changing in the middle of the game. <laughs> so many numbers, so many little variables and factors. So uh, how are you going to convey all of that information to a player? So you have a UI challenge there. Um, Beaver Evolution. Um, there is a beaver evolution. Beaver evolution. You have a range of possible bad things that could happen to a player. How do you um, explain that to the player before it actually happens to them, so that they can sort of like anticipate and plan, right? Now you can say, oh well, they'll play it through once and then they'll die and then they'll restart again. The That's not a great solution. Think of a, <laughs> think about some, something better than that. Comcastic. Um, Comcastic very specifically is a UI problem because uh, how are you going to show the players what they're about to put down on the screen and then show them the consequences of what they've just put down? Uh, that one is uh, because your game is all about how do I rotate this thing and then figure out where it goes and what's going to be the outcome. Uh, that's your, 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 your problem is mostly user input. Uh, how do you get user input in game? And Module Dice already mentioned it. How do you do this in 2D? Uh, you know, it, it's, it, yep. Yeah. Is that a hand? Uh, oh, sorry, sorry, I, I thought you were putting it in. Um, how do you uh, explain to the player if you rotated the dice this way, this is the number that's going to be coming up versus that way? If you're going to, you, to do it in 3D, fine, but 3D is at least twice as long uh, 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 in terms of development time. Um, so you have to keep that in mind. Um, for Blind Aliens and Sparkly Redemption, you're going to need some art just to be able to convey to the player what the heck is going on in your game. The good news is that as long as you have some art, I think you can make it work, but that's going to be your bottleneck. Uh, that's going to consume up all of your time. Um, things that you know, we feel that can probably work, uh, uh, that, that, that we're fairly confident uh, is within the scope of this project uh, include Lazy Beaver, Live On, Lost Underground. Um, some of these games uh, resemble other games that exist, so you already have kind of like a template uh, to, uh, to, to, to work on. Uh, some of the games, um, the, for some of the games, the paper prototype really kind of already gives you a pretty good idea of how the, how, how, how the computer game is going to work. So I'm not too worried about, you know, if your game just ran on text, it could still be comprehensible. Uh, so I'm not so worried about, the, uh, about that. Um, but uh, so these are the games that, that, that we have shortlisted. Not all these games necessarily become Project 2 games because we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10. Yes. And we're uh, hoping for teams of six. Teams of six. We do not have 60 people in a classroom. OK, so. Yeah, about 47 last time check. So about seven teams. About seven teams. So that means three of, three of these projects will have to get cut. And we'll, we'll probably just cut them based on whether they have enough people on the team, uh, which means then the people who have signed up on those teams will have to find some other team. Now, that's going to be really obvious. Once you have your post-its up there, you're going to see how many people have signed on each team. And uh, we want you to try to get to a team of at least five. Um, six is good. OK? So. Team formation. Come on down. Put your name on a post-it. You do not need to choose the game you were on previously. Once you put your post-it down, sit back down. Sit down. Come on back. Come on back. We'll read off the names and we'll see how this is going. Come on back, come on back, come on back. Did you put your name down? Did you put your name down? Uh, yeah, yeah. Then sit back down. Okay. Sit back down. <laughs> sit back down. Back down. Can I add my name if there's already six on something? Yes, you can. It just means you're going to get moved, or somebody is going to get moved. If you're not decided, you can sit down with your name, too. 
All right. Everybody's down? All right. Lazy Beaver, sorry to say. Maybe we'll see you in project three. We've got three, three, three. Oh, wait, that's more than three. <laughs> three, 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 and two. And we've got one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. <laughs> the future. Maybe you're moving. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh my god, ten. We're cutting that into two. One, two, three, four, five, six. You're okay. One, two, three, four, five. All right, so Blind Aliens is set with Roy, Mikhail, Miriam, Shalom, Chatishka, and Tsutne. Uh, Apologies if I butchered the name. Blind Aliens, you're done. Um, were there any other sixes that I'm missing? No. Okay. So, the big ones. Comcastic. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We need at least one person to leave. Is that you, Sam? Maybe it's Matt. <laughs> Julia? Sabrina? Anderson? Sean? Or Tej? Um, Maju Dice? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Devin, Peter, Caleb, Megan, Jordan, Kevin, Jeremy, Bennett, Derek, Harry. Derek, I said big letters. <laughs> You're lucky I'm wearing these. Anybody I just named, come on down, move. You have a couple minutes to discuss down here. So Maji Dice, come over here. Come, okay, great. Comcastic, taken care of. You'll get to play it. If anybody on these other teams were like, "Woo, come over to our side," Underwear. why? Why do you want people? All right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I need two more people to leave. Get out. We need some chance. Come on. All right. Maji Dice, you are now one, two, three, four, five, six. You're golden. Sparkly Redemption, you've got five. We're going to let you stand for a while. Lost in the Grand, you've got four. Beaver Revolution, you've got one, two, three, four, five. Ooh, you've got six. Yay. Making my life easy. <laughs> Plunder wins. One, two, three, four, five. You're cool for now. Dragon's Lair, you've got three. <sighs> Live on, you've got three. Lost Underground, you've got th four. We need one of you to self destruct. <laughs> Come on down if you want to self destruct, or I'll blow it up for you. You want me to roll a die? Yes. Oh my god, I love this. This is the best ever. Ooh. Uh, we've got one, two, three that we're rolling. We've got a six-sided die. How should I do it? One, two, three, four, five, six. What's up? Oh, you're right. One, two, three. Four, five, six. Four. One, two, three, four, five, six. Dragon's Lair. Sorry. It's cool. You can do it for project two. Come on down. Move yourself. What's up? Aha. Uh -huh. All right, that's six. It's done. Sparkly Redemption, you've been redeemed. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five. 
One, two, three, four, five, six. Plunder winds. You are all set to go. Sail away. How many more of these do I have in me? Yeah. We do have uneven numbers. Life is unfair. Randomness, people. Randomness. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three. Choose another team. Any team, please. Live on. Choose another team. Any team, please. That's up to them to decide, but they can do it if they want. I don't recommend it, by the way. But you can choose any one of these that's on the board, too. Wait, anything, anything on the board? You can choose anything on the board. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You've got seven choices. So many. No, too many, too many. No. You got there first. Were you this one? Sorry. You were second. You were so close. So don't choose this one. And don't choose this one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You've got Sparkly Redemption. You've got Blind Aliens. Beaver Evolution, Plunder Winds, or Lost Underground. All right. We are done. What are we doing the rest of the day? You had two for Project One. You've got five for Project Two. I think you're cheating somehow myself. Yes. How do we encourage actually we uh, ask people to get up and move around because I bet they've all been really rejuggled and we just sort of give people spots where we meet them as teams so they can meet meet they must we meet as teams. Here, meet at their team tag and then find a place in the room to sit down and discuss vision statements and start planning out their digital prototypes. So. No. Huh, you're right. I don't have a slide for this. All right, so we're going to do exactly as Sarah said, which she did not hear, but I did because I was listening. Sparkly Redemption. Hang out over here. Basically, actually, before we move, what we're going to do, come down here, meet each other, shake some hands, get to know each other, sit back down. You've got one hour left today. Talk about your schedule. Talk about your vision statement, look at your prototype, work on your prototype some more, um, rewrite your vision statement, and talk about what it actually means to make a digital game, a digital version of this game. So, Sparkly Redemption. And whatever you do, do not forget to exchange contact information. Oh my lord. Email. Were you not going to give each other your email addresses? Whatever. Maju Dice. Blind Aliens. Beaver Evolution, shun, 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 shun. Plunder Winds. And Comcastic. This is safe, right? Yeah. No, it's one of those things where you might not be happy, but it gets done. Hey, I, I think you ran that really well, by the way. Thank you. Way. That was a hard team formation, especially when people have yeah. to jump ship. I wanted to just put one of them on that one, but I didn't want to, I didn't want to be the one placing people on teams. Yeah, and I think that's the right way to do it. Yeah. What's up? Oh, yeah, someone just asked, what do you do with the old prototype that didn't get chosen? Take pictures of it. First, set it aside, maybe put it in an envelope, and then maybe it might come back for project three. So don't forget about it. 